Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back. In today's episode of BS for Build, we're doing some fun stuff. I'm going to be prepping panels. I'm going to be working on the panels, getting them prepared for paint. So that's sanding them down, uh, doing any body filler work that we need to do and stuff like that. Hopefully I'm going to have the, all the panels for the car uh, prepped and ready to go by the end of today. Could be a little tricky, I'm not sure. Uh, really interesting stuff. Eric's gonna be working on the midsection of the car, so that's gonna be finishing the floor pan that goes over the differential, connects the trunk to the driver's section, uh, and then is the inner skin for the wheel well. So that should be really interesting to see how he does that. And then Chelsea's gonna join us later on today, and she's gonna be doing the seam sealing throughout the entire car, seal all those seams up so we're safe from the elements. Should be a good day, stay tuned. I, uh, I saw from the comments in yesterday's video, a lot of you guys uh, were concerned that I did not address the no paint scenario. Um, I did say two videos ago that if we got 10,000 likes in the video that I would not paint the car and we got 10,000 likes in like four hours. I didn't even think we could do it. I just threw a number out off the top of my head. Um, thank you guys for the likes. Uh, I said I wouldn't paint it. I did not say that I wouldn't primer it and then wrap it. I decided that the only safe way for me to bring a car to SEMA on a deadline that looks good uh, was simply for me to not paint it. But we will be painting the engine bay, the roll cage, the interior of the car, then the exterior of the car gets primer, that way we can sand down the primer and create a really nice smooth surface for the wrap to go on it. And then we can change the color later. But that means that this car will never look like a rat rod and I apologize. I, I pulled a fast one on you guys. I want to build a rat rod car soon. I have an idea of a time that we could do that. So. It won't be too far away on the channel because I really love the look of a rat rod car and I want to have one in my collection since we sold the G35, which was such a good looking car, but way too dangerous for me. Um, you know, we, anyways, that, that's how it's gonna go. So we're prepping for paint and then we paint and then we wrap and then it, vic victory, victory. Time to get down to work. Eric's gonna get started over here. He's gonna build that inner skin of the wheel arch right there that goes over that. And then he's gonna work from the front this way. While Eric is building our new trunk boards, uh, I'm gonna be in here working on body panels. So I'm prepping these things for their layer of primer, which is basically kind of gonna be our final coat before we block sand. So I need to break these things down, um, get the miscellaneous stuff off, and then sand all the crap paint off of them so we get them nice and smooth and ready for primer. Surface sanding is all done. Uh, keep in mind we're cutting all that stuff out, so that's not gonna be done. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is get in there with a wire wheel in some of the rusty spots right there to try and get it uh, down to a bare metal a little bit better. And then I am going to give it a little coat of um, some uh, rust reformer uh, paint and, and stuff like that that'll, that'll stop and kill any of the rust. Um, and then we'll probably wanna uh, either body fill or sand some of these parts down where it's a little bit rougher like we might use a little body fill down there and stuff but only after the rust has all been killed so that's what i'm going to do next on this panel and hopefully the rest of the panels on the car will be in a little bit better shape i mean they look much better so hopefully let's see how eric's doing Eric's working on the inner wheel well. Uh, so you can see he kind of like tubbed this whole section out and closed that in. And now he's jumping over into that section and working on closing it in around there. And then he'll box it the rest of the way in with the piece right there. We've removed all the surface rust off the inside of this panel and then hit it with this rust reformer spray. So that's gonna be good. Uh, and then obviously it's, like, it's a rust reforming primer. So it's meant to go over rusty panels and then we'll spray over that. And then what I did on the top here was just hit the rusty spots. That, like there's one here, a couple of bolt holes, a little bit here, here and there. And then what we'll do is when we sand again, the rust spots are low where it's actually corroded away from the metal. So when we sand again, all that'll be left will be this little primer stuff. Now, interesting order of operations. This panel needs to just dry up now and wait, and then we're gonna have to bring it in and do some welding on it. We need to spot weld this spot shut right here where it actually ate through. And then we have a couple of bolt holes. We have one, two, three here and a few there. Um, so then we'll do welding, grind everything down, and then do our body filling. 
So it's time to move on to the next panel. I am honestly a little bit bored of fenders, so let's maybe move on to the door. How about that one? All right, Eric's wrapping up welding in the uh, second half of that arch and uh, Chelsea's joined us so she's going to be doing all the seam sealing on the car so it's just a wire brush down the seam and then she's got the uh, seam sealer and the pneumatic caulking gun and then she's going to run the seams and you know kind of press it in there and uh, that's it she's going to start doing it all the way through the car. All right, that door is in pretty good shape. The paint's pretty good on it, so we're not going all the way down through too many layers. I'm gonna do body filler around there, but first weld, 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 and then body filler over all that stuff. One more sand down, oh, also the holes from the Rocket Bunny kit. And then one more sand down, and it should be all ready for paint. Except for, uh, I gotta strip the interior off of that too, but that's not what we're doing today. Uh, so next, I'm gonna move on to the cowl, and then we'll go check in with the other guys inside and see how they're doing. Alright, so the cowl is ready for the uh, body filler. Now this bottom side is done though on it. So what we're doing with the with a few panels, not all of them, is that on the back side they get a flat black. Now this is all crappy, splotchy looking because it hasn't dried yet. Uh, but once it dries, this will be all just consistent flat black. And uh, that's to kind of hide the panel. So if you see, because we have a tube frame chassis, so you might see from the panel from underneath, from some weird angle or weird area. So if somebody sees up from underneath, we want the panel to just look black. We want it to look like there's nothing there essentially like they're not seeing it so like this back trim piece and all the bottom piece are black and then everywhere else will get uh, primered and then sand it down and then wrap so that's all cleaned up and we just need to do the body filler on that spot there so let's head inside and see how they're doing in there Eric has finished on our uh, NHRA style inner wheel fender, inner wheel wells. Uh, they're they're a little bit big, but we're just following the other wheel wells. Don't worry about it. We have a we have a game plan. They're not going to be seen with the finished product, so don't worry about it. We're just leaving room if we want to drop the car even more or run giant drag radials. So, anyways, um, very nicely done though, all the way around there and all the way around there. And then so right now, Eric's gonna go ahead and finish up the floor pan going into that section right there, finish up that corner like he did over here, and then just build that midsection of the trunk board, or the, uh, what is it, diff cover, whatever it is, and then that's all done. Um, Chelsea's been doing seam sealer, so seam sealed all up in here, and then now she's gonna jump into the trunk and start doing some of that stuff. Orange door is done. It's in pretty good shape. There's some signs of body filler a little bit over here and a little bit over here and there's some scratches in that body filler so we're just going to use some glazing putty to go over those scratches. A little bit of rust down here so we sprayed onto that. We'll sand that back down and then do primer. Overall it's in pretty good shape. I think I'm going to jump on the hood next. Let's jump next door and see how they're doing.
Eric went ahead and welded in a couple supports and then our diff cover. So that's where our air suspension components are all gonna get mounted and then, uh, yeah, well yeah, that's it. It's all welded up. So other than a little bit of finishing work, I think that's it for Eric. Uh, and Chelsea has seam sealed that whole back end and uh, she's gonna continue working her way around. And I shall resume sanding on the door. That's a hood. I am so tired. I'm gonna stay in the hood, guys. All right, the hood was pretty smooth to begin with, so it wasn't too much work to get it all smoothed out, but um, I did have a scratch right here. It's pretty deep, and I kept sanding into it, sanding into it, sanding into it, and you can see there's like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven to twelve layers of paint later. Uh, I finally got to the bottom of the scratch, but um, by doing that, like I made a low spot. So if you're at home and you see a little scratch, I think I think that's just maybe just coat that with body filler and sand over it rather than do what I did because now I gotta I gotta cover this whole area of body filler. So I'm gonna mix up a little bit of body filler. Um, and, and spread it over this and we're just doing light to match the surface around it here pretty big and then we'll just give it a quick sand over and then that'll flatten everything out. Other than that, everything's looking really good on this hood. There's no, uh, no weird spots or anything like that. That's not too low. That's only like one, two, three, four, that's only five layers of paint. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I'm gonna mix up some body filler right now and get that done. That's the hood done, quick and easy. So you can see how I went way around it and that way you just kind of sand it all flush and it's good to go. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and set this to the side and do the same thing for the cowl over here. There we go, got the first round of body filler right there and right there. That one kind of came out a little weird, don't worry. I'll just sand off what I don't need. Wanted to have extra just in case there. I was seeing some of the weld spots kind of show through and uh, I, so I decided it was a little too thin on the first coat, so. All right, that'll be ready for us to sand tomorrow, along with this. All right, back in the shop. Chelsea's got almost all the seam sealing done. Let's help her finish that up. The car is officially seam sealed. We did the outside pieces here, uh, some down there, all the way over there, all the seams on the inside. This could be our next submarine car, definitely. It would be actually really interesting if we went to build another submarine car. If you started from a frame like this and you seam sealed everything completely shut, it, this would like be pretty much guaranteed to float. Uh oh, we missed a spot back there. We'll get that tomorrow. Actually, I'm gonna get that right now. Hang on. All right, I got that fixed up. Um, so yeah, everything's all seam sealed. Now let me give you guys a bit of a rundown of how this, this plays out. Cause I know a, guy, a lot of you guys are probably like, wow, that like the seam sealer looks really ugly. The welds look better, blah, blah, blah. You have to have seam sealer to keep the weather out and stuff like that. But then you just, you paint over all of this stuff anyway. So if you see any OEM car, you know, you're gonna see spot welds, seam sealer, and then paint on top of it. It's, it's totally normal. I mean, it doesn't normally look this rough, but uh, anyway, so. Uh, in the next few days, you'll see the whole interior of this thing get painted out. Um, and we hit our goal. We got all the sheet metal in here that we were ever hoping to have uh, for this kind of round of painting. So this all gets painted out uh, and then um, and paint, you know, paint over the seam sealer and everything like that. Carpet will all go and cover everything here. I mean, in the end, you will see all the sheet metal that you see right now, you will not see any of it on this build when you look through the side windows, corner windows, rear hatch, all of it. You will not see a single piece of this. Dashboard in there, carpet over this. Then we're gonna build a uh, really, really nice looking, um, very clean wall. It's gonna be designed just like my Aston Martin. So the wall comes up right behind the driver, 
up to around shoulder length. It's going to tie into this bar and then it goes back. And it's going to go back through here uh, and it ties into the side panels and everything like that. It's going to go back through here and it will meet up and it will have a hinging mechanism hinged like right here. So when we open up the rear hatch, it hinges and opens up the section where we can access our fuel cell and our battery and uh, our wires. So what that's going to do is that's going to have a give us a really, really nice clean finished look on the interior. Um, it will also allow us to hide massive amounts of wires very quickly. So if we need to, we can just throw bundles of wires over here and over here and go to SEMA and no one will know any different except for a lot more people that watch this than go to SEMA, but it doesn't matter. Anyways, uh, that's, that's our strategy for hiding wires, making our interior look clean um, and being done on the, in the time frame that we have. So we're stealing ideas from Aston Martin's uh, design. And, and the downside is we won't have a trunk, but we weren't really gonna have a trunk with a fuel cell in here anyway. So that is the game plan so you guys know. Um, and I'm very, very excited about it because I feel like we found a way to make this interior look pretty damn clean. All right, guys, I left the tripod in the other shop, so I'm going out selfie mode. Thank you guys so much for watching. We got new hats. They are in. They are the same gray color and the same black color, but new, new logo on the hats. Um, they should be in the store at the time that you're watching this. If not, it'll be the next day. I really do apologize. It's just, I'm so busy here. It's really, really hard to update the store. Um, but if you want to help out and support, uh, go over to bsforbuild.com. We get, like I said, we got the hats. We have two new shirts. We have all sorts of great stuff for you guys to choose from there. And, uh, I've said this before, but that store is all managed and, and ran by myself and Chelsea. So, uh, we do all the shipping, we do all the handling, we do all the ordering and the creating of the merchandise ourselves in house. So all the proceeds really truly can stay with the builds. So there's no third party that takes any cut or does any of the management. We do it all. And that way all the money goes directly into the build. So thank you guys so much that support that way. Other than that, a great way to support is hit that subscribe button guys. All right, that's it. Tomorrow we're going to be spraying paint. Bunch of stuff's going to change. I'm getting excited. All right, I'll see you then. Peace. Come on.